Hey, hey everybody, I hope you're doing well today. A quick little invitation to all of you IB Economics students to head on over to my website, bradcartwright.com, a website designed to help you improve your scores in IB Economics, whether that be on an in-class quiz, a test, or ultimately the IB exam. So if you want some more information, check out the description box below. And other than that, enjoy this video. All right, so let's take a look at the price elasticity of demand diagram. And I just always, always, always want you to go back to think about what exactly is this diagram based on? And I'm telling you, it is based on the same thing that all microeconomic diagrams, with the exception of market failure, are based on. And that is the basic demand and supply diagram. If you don't know how to draw that, if you don't know how to get to this point that you see on the screen, check out that video up in the corner. It's called How to Draw. It's part of this How to Draw series. It's How to Draw the Supply and Demand Diagram, a critical critical piece of information for you in your in your studies of microeconomics. It will give you a little device, a little secret way of remembering all of the components of the base demand and supply diagram upon which is built this diagram and many of the other diagrams um, in microeconomics. All right, so what is on this diagram? Well, it's pretty straightforward, right? Price, dollar sign, P1, zero, Q1, quantity of product X, whatever the product might be, 100 in the, a unit, a year, D1, S1, figure one, market for product X. Now we're going to look at price elasticity of demand. And what we're going to focus on is actually just the demand curve. Okay, just the demand curve. And so what I'm going to do is I'll show you in the next slide, get rid of it. And on this slide, the way that you would draw this is you would think about, okay, I am only going to focus on demand, okay, and I'm going to label that D1. And then I'm going to find roughly the midpoint of that curve. Right there. And right there. And this is going to be my P1. And this is going to be my Q1. Okay. And this point right here is really important. And we're going to label that point A. Okay. Point A right there is where price elasticity of demand equals one. That is the unit elastic part of the demand curve. Did we just kind of make that up? Yeah, kind of, right? But what that says is that at this point, any, because percentage change, the percentage change, the percentage change in the price is equal to the percentage change, and you gotta say percentage change, of the quantity demanded. Okay, so for our product, whatever it is, product X, it could be anything. It could be phones, it could be glasses, it could be pillows, it could be anything, lights. At this point of the demand curve, we know that price elasticity of demand equals one, which means that any point below that point will be the inelastic portion of the demand curve. And we know that, I'm going to show you uh, this in a, in a, the net. I'm going to clean this diagram up and you'll see it a little bit more clearly. But this is going to be the inelastic portion of the demand curve. And this is going to be, and this is how you wanted to label it, the elastic portion of the demand curve. And the reason we know that is that the percentage change in the quantity demanded and versus the percentage change in the quantity in the price of good X is going to result in a number greater than one up here and less than one down here. Let's take a look at a cleaner version of this diagram. And there you have it, right? Price elasticity of demand, the unit elastic point is right in the middle. So you just want to make sure this is the how to draw series. I'm not explaining why all of the details behind this. This is just how to draw it, right? If you're interested in the analysis or how you do the calculations to arrive at this, check out some of the other videos I have on price elasticity demand. They're, they explain all of this in terms of like what the equation is and, and how you would calculate, actually calculate price elasticity demand. But in terms of drawing it, and this is the how to draw series, this is it. This is the price elasticity of demand for product X, right? You notice that it's price and all these same components here, D1. And we've picked a point here, and we've just claimed that that is where PED equals 1, the unit elastic part of the demand curve. 
which will tell us that any portion below that point will be the inelastic portion of the demand curve, and any point above this will be the elastic portion of the demand curve. And by the way, what that means is that if you look at the area of P1Q1, the area of P1Q1 is and will be the largest square or really rectangle that we can draw on this diagram. In other words, if I were to draw and create another, take another point on this demand curve here, the area of that rectangle would be less than the area of P1Q2, on um, P1Q1. And if I were to take a place here in the elastic portion of the demand curve, the area of this triangle here, or this <laughs> triangle, this rectangle here is less than the area of that, and the area of this rectangle here is less than the area of P1Q1. And what that tells us is that if this producer, because remember, price elasticity demand, only producers care about it, what they need to do is actually raise their price, even though they might, they're going to sell fewer goods, they're going to make more revenue because P1Q1 is a revenue box, right? If this were P2Q2, this revenue box is smaller than P1Q1. And therefore, if, you, if, a, if, a, uh, if a producer does the, the, the calculations for his or her product, they'll find out that in this portion of the demand curve, price elasticity demand will be less than one. And that means actually to increase revenue, they need to raise the price and sell fewer products. Now, the opposite is true in this portion of the demand curve. If this supplier here is supplying it at, let's call that P3Q3, what happens is if you plug in the equation and check out the other videos for the equation, for price elasticity demand, they'll find out that price elasticity demand will be greater than one. And as a result, what this will say is that any price quantity combination in this area of the demand curve, what the producer should do is lower the price and they will sell more products, but increase and have more revenue. All right, so the optimal point, the best place to be on this diagram is right here at the unit elastic portion of the demand curve. That is the goal of all suppliers because the area of this rectangle is larger than any than the area of any rectangle that can be drawn given this demand curve. Does that make sense? I hope it does. This is just the section on how to draw the diagram. I am not providing you with all the information of how to calculate um, price elasticity demand. But if you understand this diagram, it's pretty straightforward in terms of realizing that if, if, the, if, if the producer does this calculation and it's less than one, they need to raise their price and they'll increase revenue. If they do their calculation for price elasticity demand and it's greater than one, this producer needs to lower her price in order to increase revenue. Well, there you have it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you want more information on the subscriptions available for IB Economics students around the world, check out the description box below. All right, my friends, a reminder to be good to yourselves out there. Be kind to someone today, and we'll talk to you in a bit.